this week in Epixel Skyblock, a few things happened. And in this video, I'll be covering most of them. A lot of new items have been added to the sacks, including double enchanted items. So you'll have less downtime when farming. Also, there was a bug that prevented gemstones from being super compacted. So it was a massive nerf to mining as you'd have a lot of downtime. But that has been fixed. The RNG meter bug has been fixed. Before, the RNG meter would only reset after reaching the total amount of XP required to drop the item. So the players would set their RNG meter to a handle, then switch it to something else just before they can drop it. Then they drop the other item and then switch it back to the handle. And they'd have the 3x drop chance buff infinitely. Yeah, if you didn't know, higher RNG meter values means higher chance to drop the item. So yeah, I can't wait for the Iperion to be worth 3 bill. They fixed Venomous using damage modifiers in its poison ticks. So a nerf to melee once again. They fixed crop milestones going into negative. So a nerf to macro. They fixed the stranded gardens, trying to send players to the hub during server restarts. You can no longer get vanilla water while filling up glass bottles. So a really good news for people with auto brewers. They changed the redstone key in dungeons and the key is no longer a physical item. I spent a decent amount of time but I couldn't find how you're supposed to actually open the door now. So a nerf to throwing dungeons. You cannot claim auctions across your deleted profiles anymore. So a nerf. They fixed the skeleton master chestplate ability not working with the short bows. So a buff to juju nons. Since I am only VIP+, plus, I couldn't join the alpha when it was open. So here's everything I learned about the rift from watching hours of livestream wards. You need to talk to the wizard to get the dimensional infusion. Every 4 hours it is free, but it will cost grand experience bottles or bits if you want to re-enter before the 4 hour limit is over. Then you can jump into the portal. Also, you cannot bring most of your items into the rift dimension. In the rift, there are 6 stats that actually matter. Your rift time is the total amount of time you can stay in the rift. It's basically like your health in this dimension, as most mobs will reduce your rift time instead of your health, especially shies. As you lose rift time for just looking at them, you can get extra rift time by using various armor sets, equipments, and accessories. You can also collect these purple particles for plus 2 seconds of rift time. You should also collect 42 enigma souls for plus 14 minutes of rift time. You won't take damage from most enemies, but some enemies like vampires and the void will reduce your HP. If you die, you get TP'd to the omelette, where you have to kill the guards to escape. Your total damage will depend on your rift damage stat, like the wild sword has plus 2 rift damage. So if you add it to your base damage of 20, you can deal 22 damage. It's not that much damage. There's also the speed, intelligence and mana regen stat. You can also see that some items are rift transferable. Meaning you can send these items outside the rift using the chest beside the inverted Sirius. Yeah, I'm not covering all of the zones. But you can check out all of them using the rift menu. You will need to complete one zone to access the other one. So there is a fixed zone progression. Also, it will cost you rift time to travel between zones. You can fast travel once you've completed portal's quest. Motes are the main currency in the rift. You can get them from mobs, the particle things, and the quests. Speaking of quests, there are a lot of them. You'll need to complete quests to get the new items, unlock fast travel. Also, you need to complete inverted Sirius's quest to be able to use this chest. There are also some really cool puzzles like the mirrorverse, a drawing puzzle, parkour and a bunch of more things, probably. I was only able to see two bosses. Bacte that can be found in the Colosseum. For Bacte, I recommend watching D3RP13's video. And there's also a leech boss that looks really difficult to solo. There's also the vampire slayer, but I haven't seen anyone grind it. But there are some new items and some old items have been changed. Like the silver fang which is now rift transferable and it deals plus 3 damage to vampires. The perma jellied, garlic flavored, reheated, gummy polar bear. 
which has a long name. Lively sepulcher chest plate, which is probably the highest tier vampire slayer armor. Blood badge, which is a core crafting element for a lot of the vampire slayer items. The vampire dentist relic, and a bunch of more things. There's also the new Montezuma pet. You need to complete a quest for the rare one and you need to find the Montezuma soul pieces for the epic one. I think the lapis and gas tier prices will go up because of this update. The price of a lot of items including booster cookies, recombobulators and wither scrolls has increased by a massive margin. And the last two may drop in price once more people start grinding dungeons. But there's one item that will probably never go down in price. The booster cookie. Let me go through all the scenarios. If nobody does anything, the price will continue to skyrocket. Let's say some good Samaritan decides to spend their entire paycheck to reduce the price of booster cookies. Then some people will notice the price is reducing and then they'll start hoarding them, making the price much higher than before. So how can we fix this? Well, we can't. Unless the admins directly do something like maybe add a cap to how many booster cookies can be bought per day, but they probably won't do it because it's bad for business. So you should probably start hoarding enchanted pork chops.